Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Mike Siri on the line of Siri Futures. It's a consulting firm that helps traders become successful teaching and helping them to meet their financial goals with dealing with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Mike, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, well, you. what do you want to talk about first? Well, you know, I've, I've been very bearish in the commodity markets in general. The U.S. dollar hit another high today as the ECB cut their rates, sending many of the commodities down. I was short the meat complex, that was, but I, I'm out of that. But that was one of the complexes that is right back up to all-time highs in the cattle market, which is surprising. But I'm still extremely bearish. The entire grain market, soft markets, oil, gold, silver, basically I still believe everything is headed lower. Why? Why? What do you see that... The U.S. dollar continues to hit new highs. It's up another 50 today. A stronger dollar puts pressure on commodity prices. We've had a very weak dollar for five, six years, except for this year, and that's why the commodity prices were much higher. What about coffee? Coffee's flirting with uh, 200 here, $200 per pound. Uh, is this, uh, coffee's a wild child. Do you think this is a rally to fade in coffee? Yeah, I, I currently don't have any positions. Um, it's down another 500 after being down 800. It's been very choppy. I have a hard time believing that coffee prices are going to continue to go to the upside if everything else continues to go lower. Okay, and uh, sugar. I mean, this thing is... I am short sugar from 1745. We've been in this trade for a long time. I'm still bearish. It's down 20 points today, 15.42 a pound. I think we could retest the 2010 lows of around 13 and a half. Whoa. As, yeah, there's still more to go. There's still more to go, in my opinion. How do you... Uh, how's the liquidity in the sugar market? Do, do you... Sugar is an excellent market to trade. It's very liquid, meaning you can go with a market order at any time. It's one of the best trading vehicles there is. Where coffee is more uh, thin, meaning less liquidity, so you, sometimes you have to put a price order in, but the sugar is outstanding. Do you ever, like you, you have the core position in the sugar short 1748, do you ever do like additional trades, um, intra, you know, like additional intraday trades add to your, you know, add to your position just for an interday trade or do you just... Not for an interday trade. We have added to the position. The rule of thumb is you add to your winners, you never add to your losers. But yes, as long as the risk reward... My theory is I always place my stop at the two-week high if I'm short. So I'm still short. The two-week high in sugar is 1605. If the risk management is sufficient, you can add more contracts. Okay. All right. My risk management rule is 2% of your account balance on any trade. So if you're trading a $100,000 balance, you risk two grand. That's it. Okay, good good risk reward ratios. Uh, exactly. And uh, have you have you been able to navigate the crude market the last couple of days? Down three bucks yeah. one day, back up. I mean, I don't haven't you know don't really follow the the, the news that much. I know that the uh, the uh, reports, the inventory reports, uh, you know, have a big impact on it. But uh, how did you survive the last few days in the crude market? Well. I was short crude for the last month, and the trade was pretty much flat. I got stopped out on Friday because it hit a two-week high. Yep. The two-week high was 95.50 in the October contract, so I got stopped out. But then Monday or Tuesday, you know, down three dollars. Where was that yesterday? My Tuesday. We had no Monday this week. Yeah. So then it was down three bucks. I never re-entered it, and then up three bucks yesterday. Choppy markets are difficult, and then it's down a dollar today. So I'm just telling investors to avoid it, and let's wait for a better chart pattern to develop. Because, yeah. like you just said, that kills you. Down three, up three, th those are the markets you don't want to be involved in. Yeah, I was looking at it, you know, I, the, the sell-off on Tuesday, I was thinking, wow, if, you know, and I, I was doing my levels on it, and I'm thinking, wow, if this thing goes into rally mode, there's really no resistance in this thing. And I just was watching the thing go and chasing it and chasing it and chasing yeah. it. And, uh, it's like chasing the markets. The, the problem here is we want to hurt Russia. Russia's economy is based on high oil prices. So the way to hurt Russia is to have oil prices go lower. It would not surprise me if that Keystone Pipeline finally gets an agreement, because not just because of, of that, but we want to hurt Russia. So we want to keep energy prices low. We also are awash in supply. So... We, we have a lot of oil, and the U.S. is now an exporter. 
but again, I'm, I'm a technician, so when things are choppy, I just go and I move to another market that's trending. That's a good idea. Um, and, ta- and just uh, this is kind of in general for the crude or the gold or the S and P's or you know even you know some of these other futures that are that are trade around the clock. Uh, I like to really see that uh, you know the close at five fifteen for example in the crude and reopens at six. Do you put mu- do you do any trades or put much emphasis in that overnight trading or do you no. just try no not at all. I do not. Every all my stop losses and entry points are always day session only. I do not do night sessions. They're thin. Sugar was up ninety two a couple weeks ago I on a night that. session. I saw then, that during the day session finished down ten. I had a hundred and two point reversal. So anybody who had to stop it on the night session really got hurt. So avoid the night session. The night session is only for emergencies only, where you just you can't take it anymore and you want to get out or you really want to get into a market. But other than that, avoid it. Right. Or if uh, you know a profit target's hit, then you would you would you take so, it? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, right, avoid it. The day sessions are the way to go. Okay. And what about uh, I? I heard you were. You you said you were bearish gold as well, and uh, you know what? Up a couple of bucks. I'm just bearish the commodities and okay. look at grain prices. Uh, soybeans new four year lows, corn four year lows, wheat four year lows. Commodities go hand in hand in general, and it's also pushing gold lower, silver lower, but a lot of it's based on that U.S. dollar again. Okay. All right. And so, do you, do you just think the dollar is going to continue to strengthen and uh, pull yeah. people away? Why from would them? anybody want to hold their money in Eastern Europe? It makes no sense. They're highly deflationary. They're going into a recession. There's war brewing. Why wouldn't you buy the U.S. dollar just as a flight to safety? Okay. All right. We've had uh, Mike Siri on the line here at Siri Futures talking about the commodities markets. Could you? Just tell us a little bit about uh, your site and the services that you offer. Well, I'm a consultant, and I deal with people one-on-one. I spend a lot of quality time. I also write a newsletter. My website is just SiriFutures.com, S-E-E-R-Y.com. I've been doing this for over 20 years, and people enjoy dealing with me, and I definitely improve people's success. The commodity markets, just like the stock markets, aren't easy. So to be able to talk to somebody, bounce ideas, have somebody watch the markets, do the proper risk management, be a correct trend follower. It really helps people, and I enjoy working with them. Okay. All right, Mike. Well, we'll let you get uh, get your trading here. Thanks for your insight. I'm glad we caught up with you, and uh, we hope to have you on again. Well, hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a good day. Bye.